Hey everyone, so this is Catfish Season 7, Episode 6, called Zack and Garrett. Zack is the one who wrote in, Garrett's the one who he is concerned about. So, in the initial email, Zack, I going to say he's 27 and from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, he met a guy named Garrett from Kansas, and when they would video chat, his room was pitch black. Um, so he would, uh, so he offered to fly himself over to meet Garrett and first agreed, but then backed out. Uh, Garrett told Zach that he wants to meet, just not at that time, and all of a sudden he can't get a hold of Garrett, um, because Garrett got a new phone number that he's co conveniently forgot to tell Zach about. Um, so on the Skype call, uh, he found out Zach isn't from Delaware, he's actually from Montana, and he met a guy online who lived in Delaware and moved there to be with him, but the guy didn't want to be in a relationship. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, okay, here we go. Here we fucking go. Like, here we goddamn go. <laughs> Already. <laughs> um, anyway, so he apparently has two accounts. One, um, he, on his first one, he kept getting told he was being too over the top, I guess, meaning that he was being too too gay, which is not, to me, it's not a thing. You can't be too gay. Like, either, like, I mean, you can be too dramatic, but you can't be, like, too gay. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe it's just me reading into that or something, but that's just me. Um, then he, he, um, then he made his, his new profile, which is called Zach Arai, um, where, as he puts, he's being overly gay. Um, I mean, if you want to label yourself that, that's fine. I, I, I'm not one to call someone that. So, because I'm not gay myself, so I can't call anyone that. So, um, anyway, um, moving on. Um, there he's getting a bunch of messages and friend, Facebook friend requests from a lot of gay guys. You pretty much just want to have sex with him. Um, and Garrett didn't do that. So, he got to know Garrett, and that's when things started getting weird. So, they fly him out to L.A., uh, pick him up, and rent him a house. They rent his ass a house. They rent his ass a fucking house. Like, they didn't do that with Mary. They put her ass up in a hotel. <laughs> so, now they're springing for fucking houses now like I mean I suppose if it's cheaper but I don't I don't know how cheaper it's gonna be I don't know maybe it's an Airbnb or something I don't know um so once they bring him to the house he starts from the beginning and he says that a month after like he, he goes through the timeline of how things went so he's like a month after they started talking things got serious and he started saying I love yous um and eventually, he said he wanted to meet Garrett in Kansas. Garrett said, sure. But then when Zach was saying, I'm about to book the tickets, Zach was like, um, don't do that. Um, even though Zach, uh, Garrett was like, well, you're my future husband and all that. Um, Then, you know, Garrett's number wouldn't work, and a few weeks later, he's like, I forgot to tell you my number, and all that, so, they then leave to start their investigation. They start the start image search, and they don't find anything. They do a phone number of his, uh, phone, phone lookup of his new number, but don't get anything. So just old one, and still don't get anything. Um, then search his name in front of the page with the title, track and field profile. Um, but it says the oldest the guy could be is 17 because he's still in high school or something like that. They then go to his profile, but it's not up anymore. His Instagram is down too, so they call Zach and ask him if they can, if he can see Garrett's profile. Um, and he can't. Uh, so Neve and Max are like, what's going on? Why is this happening? And then, lo and behold, Zach wrote on his page that he made it to LA. Garrett's like, uh, well, why are you in L.A.? So, Garrett tells him, or, um, uh, Zach tells him, well, I wrote into Catfish, and wanted to 
you know, figure everything out. Um, and so obviously, that's why he took down his pages. Um, so they hang up the phone, search the URL for his now taken down Facebook page, and um, find several photos that are still, I guess, on the deep, like still somewhere on on, on the internet or interwebs, and um, find one with Garrett and another guy in it. So they search that photo and it comes back to a guy's profile, a guy named Alexander's Facebook page. So go to that page, find the name, same picture of Garrett up on the profile, message Alex, and almost immediately get a message back. So they're texting him back and forth, uh, or Nevis, with Alex, and um, they ask him if he's friends with Garrett, but Alex is like, you mean Gary? And the, the Neve takes a photo of the photo, <laughs> Um, and sends it to Alex, and he's like, well, his name is actually Gary Michael, and they drag, they do drag together. So they look up Gary Michael on Facebook, find only one profile, um, and it seems very much that he's not really out as being gay. Um, just like Zach has two profiles, one for his family and one for himself. Um, they find a picture of him and a girl named Katie on his regular profile. Um... Message they message her and almost immediately um, they get a phone call back. Tell uh, and so she they explain the situation to her, and she's like, "Well, if Gary or uh, if Gary um, was speaking to someone, he would have told me about them um, because he's my best friend." So, um, and she explains that about four months before. Beforehand, before this episode was filmed, uh, Gary's ex hacked into his Facebook page, and so I'm thinking like it's awfully convenient that she's coming out with this information when Alex never mentioned it. Maybe because you know Alex, uh, Alex is not his best friend, but still, like usually, even if like I, I uh, usually if they if someone is a friend of the catfishers they will usually you know uh tell any information and i don't, I don't so it don't, still seem weird so they meet up with zach who um after all that and um they meet up with him at a pilates studio because he you know was, uh, he, he wanted to find a way to de-stress um, so, they tell him everything, and then after telling him everything, Neve goes outside to call Garrett. Garrett answers, Neve wants to clarify things, but Garrett doesn't really answer, uh, but he is willing to fly out to L.A. to meet Zach. So, um, the, the next day, they go over to the house to, they rented for Zach and wait. Uh, they get a call from Olga, one of, I guess, the producers, I think that's what her name was. And she says that when she got to the airport, they couldn't get a hold of him um, because, because his flight got in about 20 minutes beforehand and um, they just couldn't get a hold of him. So they have like no choice but to wait. Uh, they try calling Katie and when she answers the phone, um, they hear her knock at the back door. Or I, I guess you could call the back fence. Um, and it's Garrett. So Garrett explains that he had a long distance relationship with a guy who lived in Georgia for about two years. And when Garrett took his ex to Wichita, the ex got a call at three in the morning, which made Garrett flip out and break up with his ex. Then he, the ex got mad and hacked into his Facebook page. Um, he made a second generic profile for his family because he grew up in a small Catholic town. Um, they confront him about Katie and her not knowing about Zach. Garrett says they talked briefly about Zach, but she doesn't know anything about him specifically. Um, they ask about the counts being taken down, and he's like, well, I was just being scared, or I was just scared, um, so Garrett was asked about not being able to go to Kansas, and his family, and Garrett says his family told him to lie, and pretend to be their straight son, um, and it's still, everything just seems really just off about the, I don't know, some just, like, some feels like it's being left, there's, it's being left out. I just feel like something big is being left out. Like, I really do. Like, you, like, usually when, 
you know, usually when, like, in the previous episodes when it was, when the cat, when the person being catfished, or thinking they're being catfished, is, uh, reveals some big secret, I'm not that shocked, so, I mean, I'm not, like, suspicious about anything, because they're obviously telling, telling, telling that they're, you know, lying about something, but here, like, someone just still feels off about this whole thing, and I feel like, you know, like, so something is, is, you know, there, there's some, something there between Garrett and Zach, and, and there, there is, like, something, like, they're not telling us that they, the, like, I, like, if, like, something like they've met up before and they just didn't, they wanted a free ticket out of it or something, or I don't know, but something feels like it's being left out, so, I mean, all this just seems too, like, flat and, like, neat or something, I don't know, it's just something feels, this feels off, that's just me, um, okay, so anyway, next thing you know, one month later, Zach is, uh, or Garrett is, is in Delaware with Zach, um, and they're, they're hanging out because, you know, their time in LA was too short, and Zach is planning on selling his house and, um, moving out, moving, I guess, to Kansas, um, and it, it just seemed like there wasn't any drama, like, after the whole reel of it being Garrett, it just seems like the whole drama stuff got, like, thrown on fire, like, flamethrowed, thrown, and left out to die or something, something, like, it just seemed like it just fell flat, and it's just like, the fuck, like, uh, anyway, so, um, next week, uh, a guy writes in about a girl he's been talking to, and they don't say names, so I don't know who it is, um, so yeah, they don't say the names of the people involved, like, even, even the person they think they're, they think they're, is catfishing them, so, um, so that's pretty much it for the whole episode, really lackluster in my opinion, like, nothing, like, I, I was just, like, kind of checked out by the end of it, but or by the time Zach or Garrett got there, I was like checked out mentally. I was just like, mm, can't be bothered with it. Um, anyway, so I'm assuming all of y'all heard about uh, this new policy YouTube is is uh, rolling out this month, and uh, it's about saying something about um, any anyone who doesn't have like at least 4,000 watt, watch time, 4,000 hours of watch time, and like a thousand followers or something like that, will have, will not be a YouTube verified partner anymore, and they're going to, uh, like their videos won't, won't, like they won't be able to monetize their videos anymore, um, and so they're effectively killing all their uh, small YouTubers in the process, um, who don't subscribe to clickbait shit, so, uh, me included, so, thinking about, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go, uh, back onto Patreon, I have a Patreon account, so I'm gonna go back on there, um, I initially had it that, uh, people who, who subscribe to my Patreon account would pay, like, a, a dollar subscription, um, I think I'm pretty sure I'm gonna uh, take that off the you have to pay to be able to you know view my content um, I will I will take I'll pro probably most likely like I said I'm most likely gonna take that off and just let you guys watch it watch my content for free on there um, and if you would like to you know donate money to my Patreon account, y'all are more than welcome to do so, but I'm not going to make y'all have to do that, um, and I will probably, most likely end up putting my videos up there from, uh, to there from now on, um, this video in of itself will be on Patreon, um, and it will be, this one will be on YouTube as well, but this will be the last YouTube video most likely, 
um, everything else is going to go straight to Patreon. I'll put a link down in the description box so y'all can go there from now on. Uh, if y'all want, I'll keep watching. But um, it's really shitty of YouTube to do this to small YouTubers uh, who don't want to subscribe to clickbait shit to get the amount of views YouTube wants creators to have. Uh, I mean, if y'all don't, I mean, they're basically alienating a lot of people because they want people to do clickbait shit. I mean, it's, to me, it's pretty obvious they want people to do clickbait shit so that more views can be put on YouTube. It, I, that's just really shitty of them. So uh, they're pretty much losing me and a lot of people to places like Patreon and I guess you could say Twitch or something if they do live videos um, like or live streams so they're pretty much like you know doing all that so so yeah um um so uh like I said I'll put the link down below just gotta make sure I um, remember all my logins because I haven't been on Patreon for a while. So um, just check out my Patreon page if y'all want to continue watching my videos. I'll put them up there um, and I will uh, make it so that y'all can watch it without having to like, actually pay money if y'all don't, if y'all are, you know, just, you know, If y'all can't do that, so um, when Vikings comes back on, I'll make a little announcement for um, that too. If anyone watches, anyone who doesn't watch this video watches Vikings, so um, like I said, I'll see you guys next week.